Hey, I'm Lonnie Harper, your Instructional Technology Director uh, for Griffin Spalding County Schools. Welcome to our TGIF All Hands Meeting. I made the promise that I'm not going to dance too much, but I can't promise it uh, anymore. Thank you for bearing with us on our technology issues. This has been a learning process for all of us. We've gone through what works with links. We've learned a lot about Google Slides Q&A presentation mode, about how long that will stay open, and that's why we shifted to the shared doc. Uh, I hope you got the new link for the YouTube presentation page, because having the Google Chat feature on uh, caused an error when you're trying to do the share function with that. Uh, so if you got that 404 error, we believe that's what it was about. So we reset the This with technology, it happens with all of us. When we do this again, we'll know what to do better the next time. So TGIF meetings. Presentation. Two questions. What is that?
long person. So is it? It's Larry. Get out of there. That means a long person came out. It's my understanding that we're back live. This is the great stuff about technology. I have Leslie Fagan and Robin Harris, my two uh, trusted comrades in this, and we were just getting started, and our computer decided to reboot. And so we apologize for that interruption. Hopefully it was a good time for you to go to the kitchen and get a snack. We'll jump back into this. Um, but now we're going to have to speak a lot faster so we stay within our time frame. But the what and why of the Google Hangout. This, fast forward to get caught back where I was, we think we know what we're doing, us in this room, us in this department, the things that we're out doing in the system. We see our vision. We know where we're going. We know the things we need to do. We feel like everybody else knows that as we put out communication services. But we've heard somewhere along the way that not everybody understands exactly where we're going, or maybe they don't have the same picture that we have of what technology is and where it's going and how it's driving instruction. So following part of the transformative leadership that we've been researching, uh, one of the tools in there that we've seen that's been highly successful in other areas was the TGIF meeting, which has been done, thank God it's vegan. So she's the driver on our ship, uh, and she's running our presentation for us today. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. The transformative um, studies that we've been going to talks about fostering a culture of innovation. I think this year I've heard more people at the district level and schools talking about driving innovation and how are we driving innovation. And so to us it fit perfectly that uh, the transformative pieces that we were looking at focused hard on building that culture of innovation. Again, the TGIF meeting uh, fell into so many of these areas uh, that are the tenets of a culture of innovation, specifically the risk taking. Uh, going live for a meeting in front of anybody and everybody with technology, <laughs> that's a huge risk uh, in itself. And we need to think about the failure that can come with that, even the computer rebooting in the middle of our startup. Uh, but we keep going. And so we need those safety nets, and people need to understand that you know, all of this is part of it. Uh, our collaboration and curiosity that we drive in the buildings. Um, and I might pause. For a moment, anybody who's been in my meetings know that I'll do that because I may tend to ramble, so I'm going to try and keep myself on task. But let's get into this a little more deeply. Culture of innovation led us to our TGIF meeting so that we can get an opportunity for everybody in the schools to have their voice be heard uh, and be heard again by somebody at the district level. Because since we work downtown in this building, that's apparently a big deal in some areas. The parents still don't feel that way, but it's all right. Um, Doing. Here we go. So the first thing that we want to talk about that's driving our goals uh, as far as the technology department is uh, our vision. Um, we do have one. Um, and it is laid out in the system technology plan. Um, try that again. Here we go. But I need to delineate some things about the systems technology plan. And that is a required piece from the state. It's one of the things that we have to submit to secure our E-rate funding every year. Uh, and it has, it's very well written, if I do say so myself, having a large part of it. Right? Anyways, um, it does focus on one-to-one -one devices. We have our layout for how that's going to roll in there, our layout for equitable access, professional development, all the meat of the stuff that's in there. It's there, and it's, it's how it's going to be rolled out. But to be honest, it, it doesn't adequately, in my opinion, portray what the vision for technology use in our district is or what the vision of this department is. And as far as what Leslie and Robin do is the vision uh, and how it's implemented in the schools. Really, our vision and our vision for this department is that, um, here we go. It's basically this, transforming the way that teachers teach. Um, that's where we see the plan because when we go into a classroom, kids can be on devices, a teacher can be projecting a presentation, but is that different than a teacher writing on the board or kids using paper? That's why we're changing what the technology does in the classroom. Uh, 
uh, and the way that we see changing of that technology um, comes a lot of different ways. Uh, a lot of through the coaching that Leslie and Robin do, but it really focuses on, say it simply, the four C's of 21st century education. And as Leslie Fagan said yesterday, we're in year 17 of the 21st century, and we're still trying to get to those 21st century skills. We've had 17 years. We should be there by now. Um, and so that's why we see our vision is helping teachers to get to that point where they're doing these things, collaborating, communicating, creating, and engaging in critical thinking. So this is where I'm probably going to spend a little time, and, and I've asked him to not let me just spend too much time on this one piece, but all of those skills and the way they're going to be implemented through our vision in Griffin Spalding County Schools is through being interconnected. We can say that a lot of different ways. We look at students being interconnected, whether it's one kid in his classroom and the teacher's facilitated a Google community with a classroom in another state, another county, somewhere on the other side of the world, but those students are problem solving and collaborating together, or it could be that one teacher has connected her classroom to another classroom in the district. And those students may know one another inside or outside of school, but they're still collaborating, they're still working together even though they're not inside the same classroom. Or maybe they're collaborating through Google Meets some projects at night. Same thing with teachers. One of our big visions that we have is a master Google Classroom. So picture it this way, there's a fourth grade language arts classroom, and all fourth grade language arts teachers are part of that Google Classroom. And they're using Google Meets and Google Classroom to build lessons that then they then can share back out to their classrooms in their building and facilitate that with their students. That's us connected, it's us working together, it's building standardization across the district, it's taking advantage of the people that our teacher of the year committees, our principals, our other leaders in the district have said, these are awesome teachers. These are teachers who really can move their students, and we're, we're using those skills. We're not designating them as just once a month or recognizing them once a year, but we're utilizing the skills of our people. We're making those connections, and then we're sharing it back out across the district. Um, and this is part where I'm going to stop, because I could keep going about that. Um, we'll have follow-up meetings to this one, um, and we'll get – a little more in detail about some of the different processes and plans that we have. Um, <laughs> there you go. It's our awesome logo. It's got flames. And a, and a pig. Sorry, I'll put a line check. Um, so we have a back channel open where it did have some questions in there. And I'm going to minimize this. Kudos to you teachers who have these screens in your classroom, because I know some of you have these. This is my first time really playing with one of these this much. Um, I don't have the questions here, but I have a, a laptop over here, so if I'm staring intently at the screen, it's because I'm reading the questions on here. So these are some of the questions that you all posted uh, over the course of the week. Uh, the first one being, how are you working one-to-one -one in the high schools? What is being done about connectivity issues with the Chromebooks at Griffin High School? Um, well, I will actually... So our system instructional technology page, uh, if you go to the Spalding County website, just go to instructional technology, you can follow the links here. But under instructional coaching, they have a lot of resources, and I'm going to use this to answer two of the questions. But under this particular one, uh, our plan is in there, and if, with it being a, a cloud shared document, it's not static. It's not uploaded, downloaded, but it's shared real time. And we try and keep those numbers updated, but it does have the rollout allotment for um, for each school year and each school and about the point at which they're projected to hit one-to-one. Uh, -one. Now, when we first created this document a couple of years ago, it was 2016, I believe, we presented then to the principals um, that with the five years of SPLOS money that we have for purchasing devices, the high school will not reach one-to-one -one in those five years like most of the other schools are already there. The middle schools, except for I think one, Rehoboth, uh, hasn't gotten a one-to-one -one yet, but the other three are there. 
elementary schools for the most part, all of them, three through five are one to one, K through two. They have sets, a handful in each classroom. So they've gotten themselves there. The high schools over the past few years have invested most of their money in buying desktops or MacBooks or Mac Apple devices. Uh, and so they didn't position themselves. So since we do equability, equi we're not even going to use that word. We use a ratio of one device for every eight students. There we go. So that everybody gets the same amount in each building. The high schools are still lagging, and so it was communicated then that the principals are also going to have to invest some of their title funds, as the other schools have done, to purchase devices to get them closer to that one-to-one. -one. Now, when our next swap cycle renews after the end of, uh, I think we have, you guys can chime in here if you know the answer. I think we have two years left, or maybe three on this swap cycle. Um, I think it's three. Okay. So after that, when we do the refresh again, we ask for more money if it's voted in, we'll continue that. But um, I'm still relying heavily on the principals of those two high schools to step up their purchasing plans for devices for students. Um, and that's what happened at all the other schools, and that's why they're already at one-to-one. -one. They offset what the system was purchasing. Uh, as far as the connectivity, uh, I've asked the techs, and I've talked with the media specialists, and I'm still asking everybody to let us know about issues where you feel like there's connectivity problems. We investigated one at Carver the other day when they were saying the ends of their hallways were not having connectivity, or where they were having connectivity issues. Um, when Will and Mary and myself were there looking at it, there was actually great connectivity, it was a strong signal. The problem was coming from either teacher or student devices where they were running a hotspot on their phone and it was causing channel interference in about three or four classrooms. So Will was able to drill it down to it was a Samsung S8 it was the model of the phone and it was in one of these three classrooms and so we left it to the principal to sort out in those classrooms who's broadcasting across our channels because those channels overlapping it's basically like static on your television and you just can't get a clear signal so we need to sort out is it something like that or is it an issue so we ask that you put in those tickets with those locations so that we can check that I hate to say put in a ticket is my answer Number two says, last year I took the course of using cameras in my classrooms. So where can you get more information? Now, if it's in Edivate, you can always go back uh, to your courses that you've completed. Uh, also, this link for Safari Montage, all of the documents, all of the documents that you would access on Edivate that had step-by-step -step guides how you can do that. They're also right here on our system webpage, so you technically don't have to go back to Innovate. You can get them all here, uh, and so they have the resources and what they're for, but also, if you log into Safari Montage panel, all of the documents that were used in the Innovate training are also posted here under resources on your dashboard when you log into Safari Montage. So you can also get the same thing there. So those three sources are where you can go to get some uh, Refresher training, basically, if that's what you need. Um, number three, wouldn't it be easier if everyone in the district used Google? It would be. I feel like I'm getting set up here. It is hard for us teachers. I'm going to borrow this. I'm sorry. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know I just didn't do that. Right. <clears throat> it's hard for us teachers who are getting Microsoft documents and Excel files from administrators at Central Office, and then we have to take the time to convert it into a new document, uh, and it does not always come out the same. We should all be using the same thing or we're wasting time. I'm going to move on to number four. <laughs> All right, no, seriously. Um, so we do provide training here at the central office. Uh, Leslie Fagan conducts all those training sessions, and actually she has one coming up when? When is it? Tuesday. It's next Tuesday. Google Forms. On Google Forms, and any of those administrators here at the central office level can sign up uh, through PD Express for those. And we have tons of training here. Um, it is a process that we are working on with administrative technology about shifting over people here at Central Office to uh, the Google Suite. You're right, it does make everything easier for all on the same platform. Uh, and I think a lot of our people here now have recognized that. Um, you know, I'll give kudos to Melvina Crawl, who just started with us as a director of professional learning. Uh, she's jumped right into Google Forms, Google Calendar. She's creating a district level PL calendar so that we can all stay on the same page about what's going on and when. 
I mean, she's, I mean, she's really there. I think it's just that transition people for, uh, or time for people coming in who are not used to it as far as people who have been here for a while and they're not there yet. We're, we're still coaxing them. But they don't have to wait for a training. If somebody That's needs sweet. assistance and they're at central office, if they will shoot me an email, I'd be glad to come over and help them if I'm not out at a school. I believe we're converting over uh, Dr. Warren. Yes, we are. When he found out about the Google Cloud print, and you can print stuff from home to the Xerox machine. I told him I do it all the time, straight from home here. So, I mean, it's understanding. I think once people understand the benefits, how it makes things easier, uh, and especially how it translates into the schools where the people are actually using these documents, and it goes back and forth, yeah, I, I think they'll get there. Uh, number four, what if this is your first year using Google Classroom? I'm a hands-on learner. Will there be any more classes uh, that we can take, or is there a class that I can already take? Um, Leslie Fagan and Robin Harris are our two trainers for the district. Uh, I say that since this is your first year using it. I assume it's your first year here. Um, but they're always available for training, whether it's direct, you know, send them an email. Because I can't put in tickets for that, can I? There's not a function for that? No, I don't think so. No, but we've talked about that at lunch, putting in tickets for training. We haven't decided yet, but we've thought about that, and it might be a good idea. We could set that up. It would yeah. be easy to do. We could. We'll talk about that later. Put that on the calendar. We'll yes. talk about that. But anyways, uh, feel free to send an email for any kind of training that you would like. Um, we talk with principals. Robin was out last week in PL planning sessions with all the principals uh, and academic coaches. Is that the correct title for you? Um, about planning with the principals. Yeah, I don't know. Where? I'm sorry. <laughs> Leslie Fagan was there also. <laughs> I know I had you doing stuff, and she had to cover some of your days that you were doing that. So it's, thank you, Robin. For anyways, so um, we try and get into the principals. You know, heads about this is what we offer. This is where we're going, especially on the SAMR model, making instruction meaningful. Um, so anyways, this is me rambling. All right, number five, did I answer that question right? Okay. Number five, when will the new DRC platform update be pushed out the Chromebooks for testing? Uh, today was the deadline for all of the technicians to submit to me their JSON files uh, so that I could upload them to the Google Chrome extensions and you guys can access the DRC. So uh, I know I did a, a lot of those today uh, setting those up and then we had meetings and stuff and I haven't done any more but um, next week I would like to say you know Tuesday because it's almost 4 30 and I probably won't do any more files until Monday so I would say easily by Tuesday you should be able to access the, your uh, DRC platform to do that practice testing uh, number six is there a sorry is there a great resource for how do you seesaw in an elementary classroom We've had some basic training in our school, but I was wondering if someone knew of a resource uh, with others. Robin, I should turn the camera and put on Robin. Robin's a great resource. Uh, Seesaw is actually coming out new to the district. Um, I know Crescent has had some training, and I'm seeing some of the stuff from my kids that are at Crescent coming through and what they're doing at Seesaw. So it looks like a pretty awesome tool. I watched the video my son did the other day a report on crocodiles. Awesome way to share student works with parents. And Facebook. Do uh, Facebook and stuff. There's so. no, but there's a very active Seesaw Facebook group. Uh, and if somebody has a question, the teachers are very willing to jump in and share resources. So if you're not on Facebook, I would suggest getting on because, they, like I said, they're open, willing to share. And Robin and I are both Seesaw ambassadors, so we can help with that as well. Um, so if you guys heard that, it's a Facebook page. Is it just, uh, oh, Robin put notes in the uh, document that we shared out with the questions. So you can contact her or Leslie, but also the seesaw.me or the Seesaw Facebook group. Uh, those two are great resources. The last one is if I want to try a new technology tool, but I'm not quite sure how to use it or want some help, uh, what can I do or who can I call? Again, any of us, let's see, where is this? Awesome. So on our instructional coaching page, here he goes. 
there you go, there's some contact information uh, for this great group of people and some of the areas of their responsibility. Feel free to contact me. This, this number seven, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier, especially with the culture of innovation. We would like you to say, hey, I want to, um, I want to try this new tool, just kind of like we, we decided we're going to try out this live stream with some different stuff. Um, and we'll be there for you. Uh, we'll help you get set up. Uh, we'll be there with you when you do the lesson. If you feel like, hey, I want to do this, but I really don't want to do it by myself. I mean, that's, that's what we're there for. That would be awesome. Uh, and so we're that support for you when it starts going wrong or your computer reboots right in the middle of everything, just like I said. Uh, also, um, Josh had mentioned on the document here that he can add a, he can sync student data using Clever. But that's only for C software schools if they purchase a license. So if they purchase a license, um, which I guess is clearly what Crescent has done, then yeah, how much is a license for a school, Dina? It's about $1,200. Maybe about twelve to $1,500 for that. If you have a free account, what can you do with a free account? Just about everything. They just don't have access to the skills view. Um, and a couple other little things, but most things are, in, are included in the free account. Cool. So you can do everything through the free account, just a couple of those features. Awesome. We'd love to see people move forward that again. So please, that question kind of makes me excited. I hope we get email requests now or somebody saying, hey, I want to do this. Will you come out uh, and just help us get ready? So it's right at 427. I did pretty good. I didn't go over. I think we were panicking about going too long. So yay for me because I ramble. Um, so the question about moving forward is, is, will we do this again? How often will we do it? Uh, our conversations have been about maybe twice a month, every other Friday, once a, a month, just depending on how things go. Hopefully we'll get some feedback from this one. We really want to take the opportunity to get down into this interconnected piece, some of the things that we're already doing. Um, there's just so much that's going on in the background that you guys don't know about that really unless you work here you just ran our meetings you wouldn't know about uh, until it starts showing up in your building or we start having conversations with you about the stuff that we're going to do so uh, and I say that with a grain of salt because I know it gets shared out at the upper level and I'm not sure how much it trickles down uh, to you in the classroom and so that's again one of our transparency pieces that we want to make sure the TGIF meetings, it, it fits that. Uh, is that everybody's hearing it from here where we're going in the schools. Uh, we've got a lot of plans. I'm taking, I'm stalling you guys, it's 428, so I'm taking advantage of these two minutes. Because one of the interconnected pieces, what we just started at Crescent Elementary this week, um, only because they were close, it was easy to run back and forth between here. But, you know, we have their K through second grade students now logging on to the Chromebook using Clever. I think Robin has been an advocate for the longest time about the frustration it causes teachers for kindergarten through second grade to try and log, log into the Chromebooks. We're now letting those kids do it just using the QR code, and it immediately takes them in there. But it was a whole long process for that. It was not an easy transition. Identity automation played a part in making that feasible, but it was probably about a year and a half worth of work just to get that functional. Um, so there's still more things we want to do with that. Anything, anything from my peanut gallery in the background before we go? Follow us on social media for the latest updates. The school system has a Twitter account at Griffin Spalding. I am at Miss Fagan, at Lonnie Harper, at Robin Harris 417. And you will know what's going on. And stay tuned for Tuesday's issue of the Tuesday Tech Tips. Lots of good information and a possible free trip to Chicago coming up. All right. So you guys have a great weekend. We'll see you all on Monday. Ready to do it again.